Hi, I'm Di Lee and welcome to the last series of COVID-19 webinars that uh, Dawn, in partnership with CMRC and Business Connect, uh, is bringing to you. So tonight, uh, the webinar will be on um, commercial tenancies and government support and it will be done in Cantonese and English. So this is our special bilingual series that we've been very uh, kind of excited to partner with CMRC on and Business Connect, and uh, we will be presenting. It will be the webinar will be presented by uh, JB Solicitors uh, uh, lawyer Vivian Lee, who I'll introduce later. But first, I'd like to uh, invite um, Business Connect uh, to talk a little bit about what this program is about, so that uh, yeah, to introduce the program. So I'll welcome Mushan to the mic. Hi 通过增长创造就业机会，帮助以建立嘅中小型企业SME变成可持续发展并提高新南威尔斯州嘅商业信心。Business 向初创企业同中小型企业推荐相关的适当附加服务 Yu 你可以向Business Connect注册以获取一对一的商业建议的。你也可以联络我们的Mr. Eric Chang. Well, thank you very much for that, Wusan, and I uh, really appreciate you stepping in there. And I've got here Vivian Lee from jo JB Solicitors joining us. Hello. Hi, Di. Thank you for having me today. No, thank you for, um, you know, uh, coming on board and delivering this webinar. Uh, but before I hand over to, uh, to Vivian, I just want Vivian to just quickly ask a little bit about yourself. How long have you been a lawyer now? Um, recently, actually, I was admitted last year. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's only um, actually a year ago in May. Wow, well, well, that's about <laughs> what, one year anniversary, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. So, how has it been like? What's it been like the, that journey to 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 be, to become a lawyer? Is that what you've always dreamt to do? 
Yeah, it's um, actually really interesting. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do at first, but then actually I was, I started just getting interested in law and um, it's been really hard work getting to where I am, especially with getting um, admitted. But, you know, it, it was a really good milestone and yeah, couldn't be proud of myself. <laughs> well, congratulations for <laughs> Thank that. Thank you. Um, so I'll hand you to into the capable hands of Vivian Lee, who will take you through this webinar to present to you in terms of COVID-19, commercial tenancies and uh, government support. Uh, I'll ask Wuhan to come in here because uh, Vivian will be presenting in English and there'll be a Cantonese component as well. Okay? Thanks, See you then. Bye. Bye. And make sure that you download the workbook, by the way, and also uh, question, uh, questions towards the end. Okay, so um, thank you for tuning in today. So the webinar is on COVID-19 uh, commercial tenancies and government support um, in both English and Cantonese. Um, so this would be in collaboration with New South Wales Connect, um, Dawn and CRMNC and obviously um, JV solicitors as well. Okay, so just a little bit about each of the organisations. So with Business Connect New South Wales, they are a uh, New South Wales government program that provides trusted advice to help start as well as grow your business. Um, and Dawn is an online webcast that encourages frank conversations and in, um, explores views, opinions, as well as attitudes in relation to the workplace and our community. Um, next, we have uh, CMRC, and they are a community, uh, community migrant resource centre that is a not-for-profit um, charitable organisation which is established in 1996. So their services um, are basically to support our migrants and refugees. And then we have um, JB Solicitors. Business Connect. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so just a bit about JB Solicitors. So we are a law firm based in Canley Heights. We also have offices in um, Sydney CBD as well as Bondi Junction. So these are just the uh, few areas of law that we do have expertise in. Okay, so uh, next slide, please. Yep, so this is um, our team here. We do have about seven solicitors in our law firm um, and it is um, headed by our uh, principal solicitor, John Boy, who has been practising in um, law for about 15 years now. Next slide, please. Okay, and this is just um, our contact details. Um, please feel free to contact us through our website, phone or email. Okay, so before I do start this webinar, I do need to go through a quick disclaimer. So any information that is provided today in this webinar is um, of general information only and is, is not intended to um, provide any uh, legal advice. So if you want um, legal advice that is tailored to your circumstances, please uh, feel free to contact our office. Okay, 
Okay, so the topics to be covered today um, include restrictions imposed by the New South Wales government, contractual obligations on small businesses, termination of contracts, employees and employers' rights and obligations, and also asset protection. 新南威爾斯州政府啦,就係呢一個新南威爾斯州政府啦,就係呢一個金制令之下啦,作出嘅影響啦,然之後仲有呢一個小型企業啦,佢哋嘅義務啦,仲有如何終止合同啦,仲有
同埋呢個遊覽館啦，同埋呢個圖書館噶。咁我哋亦都可以去呢一個餐廳啦。咁餐廳最多係有五十個顧客啦。啊，作為嗰啲美髮啊、美容啊，同埋呢一個手指甲嘅美容嘅話咧，佢哋都需要遵守翻呢個 Covid 19 n e 嗰個安全指引噶。So there are social distancing rules that still apply. So for businesses that may be open, there is a 1.5 meter、uh, rule that applies. There is also a maximum occupancy of one person、um, per one,、um, four square meter, and there must also be distance markers、um, for people queuing up at a service point of roughly 1.5 meters. 咁啦，啊，我哋咧虽然呢个企业系开放嘅，但系咧我哋仍然要遵守呢一个社交原则啦，就系、是、作为一点五米嘅距离啦，仲有一个人啊，个人与个人之间咧系有四个平方米，仲有呢一个距离啦。咁啊，如果系嗰位服务你嘅人咧，最起码系要需要一点五米嘅距离噶。Okay, so the federal government has、uh, announced a mandatory code for commercial tenancies, and it's called the National Cabinet Mandatory Code of Conduct, which will be referred to as the code.、Uh, the code. So、um, the code aims to impose a set of good faith leasing principles. So this applies to a tenant where、um, they are eligible for the Job Keeper program and also have an annual turnover of 50 million per annum or less. So、um, this code basically encourages negotiations between the landlord and the tenant,、um, as well as encourages open, honest, and transparent dealings in working together to share a common interest. So the landlords must offer the tenants proportionate、uh, reductions in rent payable in the form of waivers and deferrals. So such reduction of rent and outgoings of up to a hundred percent in some cases. And it also depends on the extent and the impact of the tenant's trade and reasonable recovery period thereafter. So, with waivers, basically, it must constitute no less than fifty percent、um, of the re- total reduction in rent payable. So, this will、um, especially apply where the failure to do so will compromise、um, a tenant's ability to、um, fulfil their obligations. Um, this requirement for the fifty percent、um, can be、uh, waived by the tenant,、um, and in relation to, to deferrals, the tenant must have at least twenty、uh, four、um, months to repay the rent、um, that was owing,、um, otherwise、um, agreed between the parties.、Um, okay, so a new legislation was also introduced in New South Wales called the Retail and Other Commercial Leases COVID nineteen Regulation twenty twenty,、uh, which I will refer to as the regulations. Um, which came into effect to give effect to the code. So this prohibits and regulates the exercise of certain rights of leases regarding enforcement. So an example would be restrictions on termination of leases due to the non-payment of rent. 咁呢個澳大利亞聯邦政府啦，已經係宣布咗一項建議噶，亦叫做 National Cabinet Mandatory Code of Conduct。咁我哋亦都叫佢特曲啦。咁然之後啦，我哋呢一個目標咧，係會誒，即係將佢咧誒，作為呢個好嘅建議啦，去誒、呃、實行噶。咁然之後啦，誒、呃、呢一、这個咧係作，都亦都係可以咧，係去呢個租客租客嗰度啦。誒、呃，亦都適用於租客噶。咁跟住咧，誒、呃、亦都係俾一啲可以申請呢個 job keeper 項目嘅呢、这個。誒、uh, 生意啦，同埋呢一個誒、uh, 有五千萬嘅每年五千萬誒， uh, 甚至係低於五千萬嘅 turnover 啦，誒、uh, 都可以適用噶。咁呢個咧係鼓勵啦，大家誒、uh, 業主啦同埋租客可以商量啦。咁亦都鼓勵翻誒一個喺開放嘅誠實嘅同埋誒透明嘅呢一個誒、uh, 商量嘅情況下啦，可以咧誒。Uh, 大家咧可以享受最大嘅共同嘅利益噶，咁业主啦必须系对呢一个租客啦，诶、呃、部分减低佢哋嘅租金啦，咁然之后有呢一个新嘅法律啦，诶喺呢个新南威尔斯州啦叫做 Retail and Other Commercial Leases COVID-19 Regulation 二零二零年，咁呢个法例咧亦都系啊、呃、对呢个曲啦系生效噶。Okay, so the next topic、um, I'll be going through is just impact to small businesses. 
Okay, so the specific obligations are different for each lease. So whether you're a landlord or a tenant, um, in response to the COVID-19, parties will be required to negotiate the appropriate um, leasing agreements. So it does also um, depend on the clauses of the contract. And the most important thing um, is that tenants must also remain committed to the terms of the lease. Um, so each lease is different. So it is to understand important to understand the terms of your lease to understand your obligations. 咁啦，我哋亦都係講一講啦，呢一次嘅誒、呃、對小型企業嘅影響噶。咁無論你係業主啦，定係租客，咁作為呢、這個對對呢個新型冠狀病毒嘅反應嚟講啦，咁雙方啦都係需要去誒呢一個商量翻誒、呃、相關嘅事務啦，誒、呃、例如係租務嘅事。租任嘅事務啦，咁然之後咧，亦都考慮翻啊呢個新型冠狀病毒嘅影響，特別係呢一個收入、財政收入啦，咁同埋呢一個盈利嘅影響噶，咁亦都考慮翻租客必須咧係要承諾翻啊呢一個佢哋嘅租期啦，同埋考慮到誒佢哋雙方嘅利益噶，咁亦都係每一份租務。租任合同係唔同啦，咁考慮到呢一點，咁需要咧誒，你要你好重要，呢、這個對你嚟講好重要啦，就係、是、話你需要知道啦，呢、這個條款噶。Okay, so the general um tenant obligations for COVID-19 is obviously to pay rent and outgoings,、uh, maintain insurance for premises, um not abandoning the premises, um and also to um notify as well as um follow any healthy Uh, sorry, health and safety、um, procedures set out by the lease, and most importantly, to、um, report any infectious diseases on the premises to the relevant authorities. 咁呢个租务租客嘅义务啦，喺呢个新型冠状病毒期间啦，系需要仍然需要俾租金啦，咁仍然需要咧对呢、這个诶。Uh, 你對呢個物業啦係入有呢個保險啦，咁然之後咧唔可以放棄呢個物業啦，亦都要通知翻呢個屋主啦，佢哋係有呢一個傳染病啦，如果係有嘅話，咁然之後亦都要遵守遵守翻啦呢個健康嘅建議噶，亦都係需要咧上報翻誒呢一個相關嘅物業啦，如果係有呢個傳染病嘅情況下，需要上報翻相關嘅政府機構噶。Okay, so are you a tenant wanting to close your business as a precaution?、Uh, pre, uh, so landlords may apply,、um, may not apply any prohibition or levy any penalties if the tenant、uh, reduces their hours or stop trading in the event of COVID nineteen. So、um, the most important thing is for the tenant and the landlord to negotiate with each other、um, if a business is required to be open.、Um, So the tenant should be able to extend their lease for the close、uh, for the close period, so that they have more time to basically trade on the current lease、um, terms.、Uh, next slide, please. Okay. So, are you a tenant voluntarily staying open? So, generally, a lease only gives right to stop or reduce rent and outgoings payable if the premises is、um, inaccessible.、Um, but, however, under the code and the regulations, no requirement. If no requirement is is imposed by the government,、um, then the impacted leasee may stay open,、um, and basically you would just need to renegotiate with the landlord、um, regarding the rent payable.、Uh, next slide, please. So, a tenant's inability to afford rent.、Um, if a tenant cannot afford rent, then the landlord has a obligation、um, to not terminate the lease or evict the client from the property. So,、um, if if under sorry, so however, this is no longer allowed under COVID nineteen. So the landlord cannot terminate the lease,、um, and especially、um, during this period COVID nineteen.、Um, so the landlord must offer tenants proportionate reductions in rent payable,、um, and also seek to、uh, waive any recovery of expenses、um, payable by the tenant. Um, the tenant should also review the insurance policy to see if、um, pandemics like the COVID nineteen、um, would assist them. And the landlords cannot draw on the、uh, tenant security such as bank guarantees, personal guarantees, and cash deposits.、Um, next slide, please. Okay, so landlords closing、um, a building due to COVID nineteen. So you have to check the clause in the、um, lease to see if a reduction in rent and outgoings is unable to access、um, the premises. Um, so usually, if you know、um, there is damage 
um, making the building inaccessible and unfit or if there was a hazardous material on the premises, um, it's unlikely that a, a closed building um, would be considered damaged um, and a landlord must offer tenants proportionate reductions um, depending on the extent of and the impact of the shutdown on the leases. So you would have to um, consider whether the contract covers pandemics such as COVID-19. Um, there also might be a right against the landlord for a breach of right to quiet enjoyment in um, either case. So um, basically quiet enjoyment is where the tenants have um, exclusive right to the premises, um, meaning they can exclude anyone from the premise, including the landlord. Yipjula,so 覆盖了这个疫情 Okay, so a tenant um, terminating a lease due to COVID-19, there may be three avenues that a tenant can take. So um, the first is the doctrine of force majeure, the doctrine of repudiation, the doctrine of frustration. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so force majeure, um, basically this is a kind of weird term, um, it is uh, a Latin phrase and it is inserted into contracts. So it allows um, a tenant to terminate the lease early um, due to unexpected circumstances that is out of a party's uh, reasonable control and that prevents them from, from performing their contractual obligations. So it will depend on the wording of these clauses in the actual lease itself. Um, however, in saying that it may be difficult to establish um, that COVID-19 um, could be a considered um, event, uh, sorry, a considered a force majeure event. So if no such terms are included in this contract, then the doctrines of um, repudiation or frustration may be applicable. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so the doctrine of repudiation. So if either the landlord or the tenant is unable or unwilling to perform the um, obligations, then it may be possible for the tenant to um, you know, bring the contract to an end. So the elements of um, the doctrine of repudiation includes words or conduct um, that amount to express or implicit refusal to perform or inability to perform um, the whole contract or a fundamental um, obligation under it. Next slide, please. Okay, so um, the doctrine of frustration. So this stipulates that a contract may be discharged if due to a profound change in the circumstances through no fault of um, either party and which has now made it impossible or illegal to perform the contractual obligations or fundamentally altered a party's obligations. So if a lease is um, impossible to perform because of um, COVID-19, it may be possible that it, a tenant can argue that um, the contract has now, has now been frustrated and should be um, brought to an end. 最後他也提及到顧客這個租客可以終止這個合同是由於新型冠狀病毒的影響 Sanfondo 
，而導致咧進行唔到嘅話咧，咁有可能啦，誒呢一個租客咧就可以咧對呢個租務合同啦係進行呢、這、一個誒。呃商量嘅，咁跟住咧呢、這個、呃、可以啦，誒將呢個合同啦嘅終止嘅。Okay, so the landlord's obligations. So this does depend on the lease and the wording of it,、um, and you would need to comply with、um, directions of the relevant authorities. So there is an obligation on the landlord to work with the tenants and external parties、um, in communicating suspected or confirmed cases and to take、um, steps to prevent the spread.、Um, most importantly, the landlord must not take any action against a,、um, a tenant for failure to pay rent or outgoings or business not being open during、um, hours specified in the lease. So the landlord basically can't take any of these following actions. Um, such as eviction, termination of lease,、um, you know, charging interest or fee on the rent that is unpaid,、um, amongst other remedies available to the leaseor. Okay, so the next topic we will discuss is liquidation and insolvency. Okay, so the recent changes to the Bankruptcy Act 1966. So as part of、uh, As part of the government's、um, economic response to COVID-19, there have been some temporary changes. So the purpose is to assist with financial distress by reducing the threat of bankruptcy. So there is a temporary change of roughly six months, and the changes mainly are in relation to the debt threshold,、um, where creditors can apply for the bankruptcy notice, which has increased from five thousand dollars to twenty thousand、uh, dollars. The time frame for For a debtor to respond to the bankruptcy、um, notice has also、um, increased from 21 days to six months, and、uh, the temporary protection period, which is、um, available for debtors、um, to prevent action by unsecured、um, creditors, will increase from 21 days to six months. So the recent changes as well to the Corporations Act 2001 regarding insolvent trading. So directors are now、um, provided with a safe harbour regarding temporary re relief due to coronavirus.、Um, so basically, they won't be getting any personal liability for any debts incurred、um, while the business is insolvent. So it has to have occurred,、um, you know, during the ordinary course of the business,、um, within six months commencing from 25th of March 2020. And、uh, before any appointment of an administrator or liquidator, so the director's duties, such as、um, you know care and diligence and fiduciary,、um, are not relieved under these new changes. Come on. Okay, so sorry, just moving on to、um, breach of contract. Okay, so if、um, you know you're unable to fulfil some contractual obligations due to COVID nineteen. Um, the contract may be terminated due to、um, an express clause of the contract,、um, the doctrine of force majeure. So that was that Latin term we were talking about previously,、um, the doctrine of repudiation,、um, the doctrine of frustration, as well as by mutual agreement between the parties. So、um, terminating a contract may not be so simple, and the other party、um, could seek relief、uh, from termination by commencing legal proceedings. So that's just something you also have to consider before terminating the lease. Okay, so、um, with first、uh, force majeure, because we have discussed it already, I'll just pass through these slides.、Um, if you could go next, please.、Um, next again. Okay, so employment rights. Okay, so standing down of employees.、Um, so as you know, you know,、um, from COVID nineteen, thousands of people have lost their jobs,、um, and you know, business closures as well due to government action. So employees could be stood down、um, during this time because of a stoppage of work, and the employees、um, stood down cannot be use,、uh, usefully employed.、Um, the cause of the stoppage is obviously、um, the employer cannot reasonably be、um, held accountable for. So a standing down of employees does not equal to being fired.、Um, you are still considered an employee, however,、um, you may not be receiving、um, pay. So employees.、Um, May also be required to notify or consult employees、um, prior to standing down of the employees, and it also depends on you know the contract, awards, and enterprise agreement、um, that the employer and employee has with each other. Okay, so unfair dismissal.、Um, so、um, Fair Work 
um, commission um, is no longer accepting any applications in person or by post um, and any applications must be brought online. So a, general, um, a genuine dis, uh, redundancy will not amount to an unfair dismissal, especially if there are a lot of redundancies um, during this pandemic. So um, most importantly as well, employees with coronavirus cannot be dismissed um, for this reason. Okay, so leave entitlements, taking leave and being forced to take leave. So employees sick with coronavirus um, who cannot attend the workplace um, due to legal obligations um, can take paid sick leave um, and they can also take paid carers leave as well if they're looking after a family member that has coronavirus. Um, full times, uh, full-time and part-time employees can also take um, unpaid carers leave if they have no paid sick leave or carers leave left. So um, an employer cannot force an employee to take sick or carer's leave. Okay, so um, are you unable to go to work because your child's um, childcare centre is closed? So basically um, an employee would need to use their paid leave entitlements to be paid for their absence. Um, and in this case, you can be paid um, carer's leave because your child's um, childcare centre is closed. And this could be um, considered an, an unexpected um, emergency if it's, um, you know, especially under short notice and um, if there are concerns for coronavirus, um, you know, being tested at the school. Okay, so um, are you required by law to quarantine or self-isolate yourself? So um, in relation to this topic, it's not actually covered by Fair Work um, Act and arrangements must be uh, made between the employer and employee. So um, if the employer directs you to stay at home in line with the government's health um, guidelines and advice and the employee is not sick with coronavirus, then the employee should be paid, um, you know, um, based on the employer's direction. So an employee will ordinarily not be entitled to pay except for paid um, leave if um, an employee cannot go to work because of the government direction or if um, an employee is unable to work due to travel restrictions, such as being stuck um, overseas. Okay, and if you're a casual employer or independent contractor, obviously it depends on um, your terms with the employer, but mo um, you know, generally um, casual employees um, are not paid any sick leave or carer's leave and also um, not entitled to pay if they are self-isolating. Um, and this could also be applicable to independent contractors as well, um, but there may be some exceptions in relation to textile, clothing and the footwear industry. Okay, um, and the last topic today we'll be um, discussing is asset protection. Okay, so how do you protect your assets? So there are a few ways that you can do this. Um, the first way is through drafting and preparing your will. Um, and this would be highly recommended if you were to purchase a property or, you know, you were getting elderly and you just wanted to pass something down to your kids. Um, another way is creating a trust. So a trust is a separate legal entity um, separate to yourself. So if for some reason you were to be sued personally, um, any assets that's um, protected um, under the trust will not be at risk. Um, you can also... Um, consult with a financial advisor as well. So as solicitors, we cannot give you any financial advice. So please seek a financial advisor if you do need fi um, financial advice. Um, you can also protect your assets through drafting and preparing an endure, uh, enduring power of attorney. So basically um, it's where one person can appoint another person to be their attorney um, to act on their behalf um, in relation to um, their legal and financial matters. Um, so this basically means, you know, purchasing property, um, purchasing any other assets and as well as, um, you know, um, spending money on your behalf. Um, and the last way um, that you can um, protect your assets, according to just our presentation here, is um, drafting and preparing an enduring guardianship. So this is where you can appoint a person um, to make lifestyle and health decisions on your behalf um, when you lose the capacity to do so. Um, can we go back to the previous slide, if you don't mind? Yep. 
。咁而家我哋可以討論一下點樣保護你嘅資產噶。咁首先咧，第一個方法就係可以啦，係起起草啦，同埋準備翻你自己嘅遺囑啦，或者係建立一個 trust 噶。咁亦都可以諮詢翻相關嘅金融嘅建議者啦，亦都可以起草或者準備翻一個 enduring power of attorney， 亦都可以起草或者準備翻一個 enduring 呢個 guardian 噶。咁呢個 guardian 啦。就係、是、一個啊、呃、人啦，就可以你指定嗰個人，當你喪失咗生活能力嗰陣啦，佢就可以幫你咧誒、呃，以你啊、呃、未喪失能力嗰陣指定嘅生活方式啦，去幫你誒、呃、做呢個安排噶。So how can we help? Um, you can book your con um consultation with JB Solicitors. Um, please also visit our YouTube video um regarding unable to fill a contract due to the coronavirus. Um, please feel free to also visit our um website as well as sign to our um monthly newsletters and um call our um office as well. So we'll be happy to have a chat with you. 咁呢以下咧就係我哋可以點樣帮到你嘅方式啦。首先啦，或者你可以预约翻我哋嘅諮詢專員啦，係 JB Solicitor 嘅最誒諮詢專員，啊，亦都可以詳情查詢翻呢個 YouTube 嘅 video 噶。咁佢睇嗰個可以係打呢個 Unable to fulfill a contract due to the coronavirus。咁呢一個亦都可以啦，去瀏覽翻我哋嘅網頁啦，查詢更多嘅信息，甚至係可以啦。啊，跟進翻我哋每月嘅 newsletter 啦，或者係可以打電話俾我哋噶一三零零二八七九一一。And also please um contact Business Connect if you have any questions and they can um put you through to us as well。咁或者你都可以啦，誒查詢翻呢個 Business Connect 啦，咁佢哋咧亦都可以咧將我哋嘅電話啦，啊可以啊通過電話嚟聯絡翻我哋噶。Okay, great. So that brings our webinar to an end.、Um, is there any questions、um, that anyone had?、Um, perhaps I can assist. Okay, so if there's no questions,、um, I want to thank you for your time today.、Um, thanks for tuning in. And again, this is in collaboration with Business Connect New South Wales, Dawn, CMRC, and JB Solicitors. Thank you for your time. 好多谢大家今日嘅出席啦，亦都好多谢我哋嘅合作伙伴啦 ，Business Connect、当 CMRC， 仲有 JB Solicitor 噶，好多谢大家。Thank you for thank you for tuning in to the last webinar,、uh, the COVID nineteen、uh, series that Dawn has partnered up with the Community Resource Centre and Business Connect.、Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank、um, Uma Menon from the CMRC for trusting us to work with us to deliver this. I think first time ever a bilingual series webinar on、um, to help those from culturally and linguistically diverse communities. Especially in the southwestern Western Sydney, to have access to information to help them、uh, through this very challenging period, and we've had one on、uh, you know in, for the targeting the Arabic speaking community、uh, on commercial tenancies, a、uh, one on the Vietnamese speaking community on cash flow management, one on the Korean speaking community on business continuity, and of course this last one on commercial tenancy targeting the. Uh, Cantonese speaking community. So、uh, we've tested this series, and we'd like to thank uh, again uh, Business Connect, CMRC, and the various partners we've partnered with:、uh, John Boy Solicitors,、um, the、um, Nathaniel、uh, Chung, and Tiha from the Loan Lounge,、uh, and uh, also our uh, Korean, uh, the uh, uh, HC uh, L uh, Advisory for presenting the business continuity. Uh, I think that's that's right, Cecilia Cecilia uh, uh, Hung、um, Cecilia sorry Hung Ji Hung Cecilia Hung Ji. 
Sorry, Cecilia. <laughs> been, a, been a long day today um, and uh, uh, presenting the business continuity. Um, but I think that's it. Uh, we have come to an end for this webinar series and we look forward to probably presenting another webinar series down the track. Uh, looking at various topics that impact our community. And uh, once again, also thank you to C Studio for hosting this with us, Leonard C behind the man behind the control panels and uh, Nadine Ahmed for, you know, working with us to design all of the presentations that you've seen. And this is available obviously on our uh, Dawncast uh, YouTube channel to download as well. So once again, thank you. And I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave a comment and subscribe if you want to hear and more content such as this. So have a good night. Thank you. Bye.